Welcome everyone. My name is Migret Fletcher. I am the author of Discover Mindful Eating for Kids and this is another installment of Frog and Bear Stories. If you've been following me, you realize that um, my frog actually is a cow and my bear over here is a polar bear. Frog and bear stories are change stories that help introduce kids to new foods and new situations, and it does this in a friendly and lighthearted way. The spirit of the change is play, and we're using some great cuddly teachers to help us. Now, frog and bear stories, um, as we said, they come alive for kids when our characters, cow, has some qualities that kids can relate to. So if you're working with children that really like dinosaurs or they really like uh, popcorn, you might bring those qualities into your soft and cuddly character. In a previous episode, we'd learned that Cal really likes green foods and green, and he also likes to walk a lot. We learned that Bear likes to color, and he also sometimes likes to pretend he's an ape. Um, so, uh, and also Bear is not 100% sure if he likes cranberries or not. So Bear's a little bit more fearful about food. Cow, on the other hand, not so much. Could be because he has four stomachs, but who knows? Anyways, Change Stories, uh, the concept of change is based on the work by B.J. Fogg, who is the professor and director of the Persuasion Lab at Stanford University. Dr. Fogg has us help, helps us understand that change has kind of three parts to it. The first one is if we change once, he calls it a dot. If we change more than once, a couple of times in a row, he calls that a span. And last, if we change for the rest of our life, he calls uh, that a path. In this change story called Frog and Bear, a change story, the food challenge, we're going to be introducing the concept of new foods for children for a span of time. And these new foods are gonna be a challenge activity. The spirit by which we introduce our cow and bear uh, heroes here, they're gonna be introducing new foods and we're gonna be doing a food challenge. So we're gonna be having new foods for a span of time. Now, there isn't a right or wrong way to introduce a cow or bear story. And there is no right or wrong way for you to do this in your home or institution. The key thing we want to do is we want to model really good listening skills. So if cow is having the problem, bear is a great listener. If bear is having the problem, cow is a great listener. That's pretty much it. Again, it's also important to emphasize that the outcome is not what we're focusing in, but the effort is really what we're focusing on. So we're not really hoping that if there's a new food that one of these characters will like the new food. We're, what we're really trying to emphasize is that they're both willing to try the new food and that they're willing to keep trying new foods even if the food they tried last week, ah, not so good, okay? So even if Bear tried a new food last week and he didn't like it, doesn't mean that he's gonna not like this week's new food. So this is this idea of kind of challenging our kids to eat even when we've had some difficult experiences. In previous videos, I talked about introducing change stories and encouraging people who are doing the change story to be silly and to wear silly things and silly costumes because it helps get the kids back in the spirit of things. Um, because this is an introduction and play, it's really important that you bring that as much as you can into your activity. So what I'd like to do is just pause for a minute and talk about the change story that we're gonna do. Again, this is called uh, Frog and Bear, a change story, the food challenge. Hey, bear! Yes, cow? Did you know we get to try a new food? A new food? What's wrong with a new food, bear? Well, you know, last week I tried that cranberry. I was really scared. What happened? Nothing. Oh. 
Do you think maybe you want to try it again this week? I don't know. It's hard for me to try new foods, cow. Oh. Maybe if you looked at the foods, it wouldn't be so scary. Do you have them? Sure. Let me go get them. This is my new food. It's called a mango. Have you ever eaten a mango? <laughs> Doesn't smell like this much, but when I cut or bite into it, ooh, it smells sweet. Nuts. That's my next new food. These are almonds. This is an apple. In fact, this is a Cortland apple. That's my new food. Hmm. Cow, I've had apples before. Excellent! But they were only golden delicious apples. Golden delicious apples taste different than a Cortland. I'm afraid. What happens if I don't like it? I know. I could stop eating it. You could. I just want to eat the foods I eat. You know, I'm hearing you, Bear, and I'm your friend. I like trying new foods. I get to find out what other foods I like. It's fun for me. Is there any way I can make trying new foods fun for you? I don't know. You know, if you don't like them, you could always stop eating it. So that might be how you present this food challenge. Then of course you could introduce the food that you wanted the kids to try and try the food. Remember to process the experience checking in with the kids to learn did they like the new food? Was it pleasant? Was it neutral? Didn't really go either way or was it unpleasant? And again if you get a reaction, if you find that children are really not um, connecting with that food Add, again, I'm hearing that this food wasn't enjoyable for you now, or you don't like this food now. Keep the door open for change. Keep the door open for children to understand food preferences change over time. And that this is a food challenge. Using our friends, bear and cow, we can role model the change process in a fun and lighthearted way. And really, that's the goal. Thanks for listening.